Hey everybody, JJ here, back again with another Wednesday of Zoom Networking, and um, we got a really great guest speaker today, a very special guest speaker. Uh, young lady is a good friend of mine, have the pleasure to meet her a number of times in person, I guess you meet people in person, but uh, she's just dynamic, she's magic, she's colorful, she's vibrant, um, great personality, and with a great message. I'd like to introduce my good friend, Lisa Van Zylen. Lisa, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm really excited to have you here. Hey, um, for those that don't know you, where in the country are you located? I'm in Correct. Los Angeles. Yeah. Los Angeles, sunny Southern California. Hey, your um your topic today is why energy healing is imperative for your life and your business. What is energy healing? So energy healing, you know, most people know about Reiki, Tumo, and that's a traditional therapy that's starting to, I feel like, get some notability now. Like most people have heard of it. I feel like it's kind of rare for people to not have heard of it. And I did get certified in Reiki, but then I also went to a spiritual school for four and a half years where I learned to read auras and chakras and past lives and do energy healing, but in a meet much deeper way than traditional Reiki. So it's looking at the spiritual, the emotional, physical body and see what's in the way of you living your happiest and best life and then embodying that best life in your energy field. That That is so awesome. I find this topic amazing. You know, chakras and spirituality and Reiki, I've been introduced to these things on, on a, on to say a lower level or a beginning level and to have an opportunity to learn more about it. As I've said before, I want to sit down with you and go over this stuff in detail. But um, you didn't start off doing this. You you came from the corporate world. Is that right? Yeah, I actually went to Texas Tech. I got a marketing degree. I was an account manager at a marketing company. So I was managing clients and employees and very high stress. And that's actually what turned me to spirituality because I was like, how do I deal with my own stress and deal with crazy people, <laughs> crazy clients and just demanding and nonstop go, go, go all the time. So that's kind of 15 years ago. It's what really propelled me to look into other ways and alternative ways to manage stress anxiety because I had a panic attack and I was like, I can't, I need to find ways to manage this. I don't want to just take advantage, which no shame to anybody. But for me personally, I was like, I need to get, I need to get deeper on this and figure this out. So how does one, you know, if people want to look into this, how do they do that? How do they, it's a matter of, to some extent of finding balance in your life, right? Yeah. Energy healing is about finding balance. It's about, you know, cause just think of, you know, when you have a million things going on in your mind, you're not present. And actually spiritually speaking, you're kind of out of your body. You're not here physically with yourself, with friends with family. So in the energy healing gets you grounded in your body, helps you feel relaxed. It helps your nervous system and improve so many i feel like the more i do the energy healing work not only for myself but then hearing from clients it just spills over into everything into life it's not just one thing but it's you know because working on your mindset health self-improvement all those things are great but if energetically deep down you don't feel what you're thinking you know subconscious conscious so it almost gets a little bit deeper into the subconscious conscious, but in like the energy component. So, and energy blockages could be in the body, you know, where I've had clients that have had back pain and that's connected to not feeling supported. Knee issues is not able to move forward. So our bodies are always speaking to us. So I'm able to get downloads for intuitive spiritual guidance to see what that blockage is and then bring in life force energy to move it out. Like I had a client once over the phone. I didn't even see her face. And I said, um, do you have really tight shoulders? She said, yeah, I actually have frozen shoulder syndrome. I'm like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> Just letting you know, I'm putting my hands under your shoulders as a symbol that you're supported by the universe. And by the end of the session, she was like, pain's fully gone. Thank you so much. 
So she was holding that in her field, but sometimes we can hold pain in our body. We can hold um, stress for different reasons, but they all hold a reason why they're there. So say for instance, for that client, it was, I don't feel supported. So if I have frozen shoulder syndrome, I'm in the freeze state. So I'm able to be aware of my surroundings, but you get to a point. So I only see things people are ready to shift. If they're not ready to shift it. I won't see it. So obviously with her, she's like, I'm ready to shift this. I don't want to feel this pain in my neck. So it's like, okay, it all goes down to not feeling supported by the universe. And that could go even deeper with, you know, energy healing could go with past lives. It could even go with past trauma from this life. Like maybe it was a father figure or a mother figure that wasn't supporting them. So then we hold on to that in the body. So yeah, but I can go on. <laughs> that's just wow, one. That, that, that really resonates with me. I, you know, I think so many of us have had issues. Um, <laughs> here I am talking about myself. It, you know, my dad was not supportive in my life. Yeah. And it it took a long time for me to move past that. And I think sometimes I, I may even still deal with that. And I, I think a lot of people have different aspects with different members of their family, uh, maybe different employer situations. Um, as you said, sometimes uh, these things can be, I'll just say in our mind where we have a blockage or these things, as you, as you pointed out, can relate to a certain pain in a certain part of the body that is actually storing up I'll, I'll use, and I'm complete layman to this, but I'll just say my perception might be storing up negative energy from another situation in a certain right. part of the body. Like you say, yeah. you know, trying to carry something or having an issue moving forward. Um, I think it's amazing how you've actually, you know, you've studied this. You, you, you've worked under people that have, have great, great experience with this to, not only learn this, but you've refined your knowledge over many years now to get really, really good at what you do. Yeah. And um, I think it's absolutely amazing. It's again, you know, sometimes it's a family member. Sometimes it's, it's a, it's a, a work situation. And sometimes we don't even know what's going on as far right. as, you know, w what challenges, you know, present themselves as a real estate investor. You know, most people I hang out with are real estate investors, we're so so many of us are chasing the deal. We've got so many irons in the fire, so many balls in the air that we're trying to juggle that we deal with stress and we deal with anxiety and we deal with 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 tension. And we don't always know how to work through that. And I know a lot of times somebody will say, take a chill pill. You know, just yeah. breathe, just relax. And and I for myself sometimes it's a matter of taking my dog for a walk or just getting out in nature just so that I could become balanced and centered. Right. And get back to being me so I could take on what's in front of me. Do you, do you see stress being a huge issue for people? Of course. That's the whole reason. And that's definitely, I mean, the whole reason I actually started this is because I want to be the person I wish I had 15 years ago to lead me out of a toxic job to, feel grounded to feel peaceful, you know, so, um, stress is definitely a huge component of, you know, why we're not able to relax. And that's the thing, even though say, like you're saying, someone says, take a chill pill, but you can hear that on like a mindset level, but energetically you may say, I don't feel safe. I was never supported. And there could be underlining stories, especially us as humans, we obsess about things mindset because we haven't cleared it it's a pattern and we're running unconscious patterns that keep recreating the same scenarios in our lives so even like people we can get out of our lives but then if we don't clear the pattern and we don't see why it's there then it and tends to recreate in another way or in another person so it's like okay when stuff comes up that keeps repeating that you're not happy with it's an opportunity for you to ask why is this happening and then especially I help people that can't see it. <laughs> so I call people out in a nice way and it's like intuitive therapy. And I, I once had this client who he didn't even say hello. It was at an event. I was doing readings at an event and he didn't say hello. He didn't say his name, anything. It was a client of mine's husband. And, you know, he's like, I want a reading break. Um, 
or he sat down for the reading and I said, can I be straight with you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you need to stop being passive aggressive with your employees. I'm like, you need to sit them down and you see, are they going through something hard and that's why they're not able to perform or are they BSing you? And if they're BSing you, three strikes are out. And then obviously going through something hard, you figure that out and like relative to the situation. But and he just like just kept nodding. <laughs> and like he didn't say anything about. So that's why I feel like this work that I do is almost like accelerated in the sense of like not like your traditional coach or your traditional therapist or your, even your traditional energy healing. Cause I'm bringing in spiritual guidance, but logical guidance for your business, for your life and every component. But then I also bring the energy healing. So it's releasing what no longer serves you and embodying the next best version of yourself. Wow. So, you know, traditional therapy is like, let's talk about it. And like three sessions in, they're like, oh, we made some progress where it's like, I tap in and like, hey, what's going on with this? <laughs> And people don't even tell me what's going on in their life. Like I had another client too, who was like, do you not feel like you can trust the universe? She's like, no. I'm like, was your dad an alcoholic? She's like, yes. I'm like, did you feel like you had to walk on eggshells? She's like, yes. I'm like, that's her symptom. So I get to the root of things, but then sometimes getting to the root of things, sometimes it automatically shifts the energy and you don't have to do anything else. Other times you see the pattern, but then I give resources and education specifically tailored to that person because we're all created different. Not one thing's going to work for the same person. That's why I'm always on the quest after 15 years, trying everything under the sun, whether it's for me, for a friend, for a client, whatever. Cause I had this client, I was like, okay, here's a suggestion. She's like, great. I'm like, yeah. Cause I'm seeing if I was to give you this other suggestion, you would do it and you would shut down completely. She was like, absolutely right. <laughs> Hi, Chesla, you are on with Lisa. What's your question? Uh, it's so funny because my, my question you in a nutshell just answered like I really was curious about uh, once you identify sort of the initial block and sort of release that then kind of what was your strategy for um, you know continuing to work with the person and guide them yeah. as to where to go next and how to continue to grow uh, my background I've been in healthcare most of my adult life. I'm a physical therapist. So, um, you know, I totally recognize what you're saying on a lot of levels. So a lot of experience with that, but I'm just curious how you do it exactly. I know you said you do provide suggestions and things like that. Is there any yeah. particular technique? Like I know for me, meditation has been really huge. Do you have any, do you do it very specifically based on each client? Or are there kind of a group of specific things that tend to work well for most people? Yeah, honestly, there's not one modality. But when I do work with people one on one, I, we always do meditation in the beginning together. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. meditate more than one person actually amplifies the energy. Mm -hmm. And I've seen my own psychics and healers and they just like throw you in and look at you. I'm like, can we just take five minutes and ground and get ground together and get more clear. And so, cause the more clear someone is, the more I can see or a little, even a little bit more grounded, I'm going to see more in their energy field. So I do the meditation. Then I do the chakra reading, going through each mm -hmm. of the chakras and getting messages. And that's when sometimes I can see energetic cords. I can see family. I can see past lives. Um, and then I do the energy healing, but when I give resources, yeah, it's fun because I have a lot of tools out of 15 years, but then mm -hmm. sometimes I get downloads from client spirit guides for things I've never even heard or tried myself. And I'm over there taking notes. I'm like, can I borrow that? <laughs> like it's, I, it's like sometimes stuff I get out there is like really out there, but it's like I bridge logical and spiritual. So I'm not so woo woo. I'm kind of like a little, a little woo and a little logical. And so I bridge it, bring it together, you know, to help people, but there's definitely not, one modality. I do recommend meditation for clients to get grounded, of course. And I have some meditations on Insight Timer. It's a meditation app. So I have that there. But then it's not necessarily one thing. I, I realize that meditation is great and I have been doing it for 15 years and recommended it to clients. But then again, like we're not created equal. There's certain clients that are like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's here. This is another suggestion I'm going to get because there's other things that can be your meditation, you know, and that could be something else. So, yeah. Totally. I will have one more quick question as you're speaking. Since you came from the corporate background and you got into this, 
So what was that like when you first started, when you were like, oh, I have this gift. Now, how do I, was it a lot of work to sort of figure it out or did it just start coming to you? Well, to be honest, I, you know, I cultivated, cultivated it for years and I was just doing it for myself. I was like, right. this is going to help me deal with life. Great. And then I was actually pursuing a health and wellness business after I left the corporate world. And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. It's residual income. It's passive. Great. And then all these other intuitive psychics were like, you're meant to be a healer. God wants you to do this. You better get to it. I was like, oh, I think because I know I never thought of it as an option because it's, right. to be honest, I am a spiritual person, but I am very logical. And a part of me is like, come on, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Like, really, I'm going to be sometimes even when I'm giving readings at these events, I'm like, really, I'm, I'm this girl now. I'm this girl. Like a part of me kind of laughs at myself. But the other part of me is like, well, I'm changing my life. So. Here we yeah. Are. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that we we chuckle because way back when she would always give me advice like it's just it is what it's going to be, you know, the universe will take care of it. Yeah. My logical brain was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and now we chuckle all the time cuz I I'll call her and say, "Hey, the universe was telling me something." Yeah, right? I know. Yeah. Part of me is like, "Really?" But, you know, here we are. <laughs> That's why I'm different than other psychics. I'm not like because some of them I've been to, I've been like, woo, come bring yes. it back, bring it back, bring it back. So <laughs> get a little more grounded. But yeah, so it definitely was, it was like all of a sudden just getting very loud messages. Like I even had a reading recently and they were like, you need to get more serious about this. You're, you're a very powerful medicine woman. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, okay. I thought I was pretty serious. I'll, I'll get more serious. <laughs> so that's you know. awesome. That's really neat. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I'm always, I always wonder kind of how that evolves over time. I mean, obviously you've studied a lot, but there's a natural. Yeah. Benefit, I mean, so. it also just evolved from like, I think at first I was like, when I newly got in the spiritual world, feeling self-conscious about that, especially mm -hmm. talking to people in the corporate world about it. And oh, yeah. even a little bit feeling ashamed a little mm -hmm. bit about it and then working past that. And then you get to a po point where you don't care what anybody thinks. Right. And then you just, get more confident in your craft and sharing about it. And then, you know, it just seems like, and I think that goes for anything with that anybody does, the more you get comfortable with it and the more you don't care, it's like, that's when things kind of happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all about getting, getting grounded within, right. Bringing your energy right. within yourself and then you can start recognizing those things. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for explaining all of it. That was awesome. You talking about something earlier that I'm just going to take in a different direction, confidence, right? Yeah. Now, we had a, a person on the call earlier tonight, and a lot of investors are, you know, learning about real estate, and they're learning, looking to use social media. They're, they've never really used it before. They've never posted. They've never commented. They've never taken on to utilize a Facebook page for their business. And so some people are uncomfortable with how do I post, when do I post? But, I mean... It's just about getting that confidence up, right? Because we're we're looking now to a lot of these people. Maybe they're not a natural speaker. They're not used to being in front of a number of people, much less talking in front of 15, much less 50 people. But so maybe they're uncomfortable with something. Maybe they've got some reservations somewhere. So is this something they might be able to work through? In yeah, like of course. Talking to someone like yourself? Of course, because that's working through past traumas. And that could be like your mom always told you to be quiet or something when you're younger. Or it could be like having a brother that always outshined you. And so you always felt like I have to stay small to be safe, you know, and I help people through all of that. And then embodying the version, basically seeing what's in the way of them being to embody their happiest and best self. And that could be, of course, confidence because the reason we have those actions. So there's two ways. I don't know if you've ever heard of, there's this course in miracles that said you either act out of love or out of fear. It's the only two ways. So if you're fearful to shine bright, then there is, there's something behind there. There's a reason why some people think like, Oh, just post. It's like, you don't realize Hey, maybe you're scared to shine because of you don't want anybody else to feel small, you know, and there's like, there's all these stories that we hold in our energy field about what's holding us back from fully being present, fully being authentic, fully being ourselves, because 
it also is posting and speaking. It's also a very vulnerable space. If you mm-hmm. want to oh, really yeah. show up as yourself, it's a very vulnerable space and you have to be comfortable with yourself. If I wasn't comfortable with myself, I won't be able to talk now. You know, it's like maybe when I first started speaking, I started doing these self-love workshops um, years ago. And maybe like the first few was like kind of nervous and then you get more comfortable. But just like anything, if you're comfortable in your life, you're comfortable in what you do, you're able to speak about it more clearly. And yeah communicate so it definitely it definitely comes down to it because when you think about it lack of confidence is also it's almost like that shaky energy like you don't feel grounded you don't feel grounded in your body in yourself you're not trusting yourself you're not trusting life whatever it is so i see whether that's family friends environment life i mean it could be many different things you're so right it could be so many different things you know i'm i'm dealing with investors all the time from a networking standpoint I'm just really trying to teach people how to network, but I'm realizing as you're as you're saying this that everyone comes from a different background, and they don't always have the same experience that are leading them into the investment world, and that's yeah. the, that's the world we're we're, we're kind of re- relating to at the moment. And you know, people go to a local meetup, might be twenty people, might be fifty people. They'll go to a, a big mix, it could be 100, 200 people. And a lot of people are really reluctant to open up. Now they can say that they're shy, they're reserved, but you know, when it comes to real estate, it's a people business. Yeah. And so it's really important that we learn how to adapt, we learn how to engage, we learn how how to mix. And um it seems that if one can learn to become more balanced and deal with some of the external influences. It's going to make one stronger in achieving their goals. Is that not correct? Of course. And even just for myself personally, like the more I do the energy healing, the self-healing on myself, honestly, things that used to bother me for years or months are now like seconds, minutes, just like just roll off. And that's also an aspect of confidence when you think about it, because, you know, especially when it comes to real estate, you're going to hear a lot of no's. You're going to hear a lot of no's. That's going to happen. And you have to get comfortable within yourself for those no's and realize, and that's when you have to get grounded in, okay, you know, God universe has another plan. Okay. Thank you. Next, you know, and help people deal with that and move forward. And it's about letting things roll off of you and not taking things personally. And, but definitely developing a confidence. I feel like it's, you know, it's something people, it's like a muscle you have to kind of work on and it's you know not something that can happen overnight but it also comes to you know if we are running from our problems and running from things that are holding us back it's still going to show up like people can say affirmations all day but like energetically you don't feel what you're saying those affirmations are essentially you're saying what you think like you're saying the native negative words that your energy, you know what I mean? I'm trying to like put in words or it's like, essentially you're saying like, say, I don't believe in myself, but then say you're, you're saying affirmations all day. Like I believe in myself. I believe in myself, but like energetically don't believe in yourself. You're almost saying the affirmations of, I don't believe in myself because energetically that's how you really feel, but you're saying something different. You know what I mean? So in energy healing, you're able to kind of release that and see it more clearly honestly i feel like in a more efficient way you know and but yeah it could be a lot of different things that why people don't have confidence but it definitely if they don't have confidence it's like you've got to look at that deeper and uncover it because you can't keep running from it otherwise it's going to catch up and bite you <laughs> you know we we all deal with so many different things that you know oh, yeah uh, Everyone, you know, we, we've heard for decades through all of our life the phrase baggage. We've all got some kind of baggage. Well, you know, you fall down, you pick yourself up. We all just have to move forward with whatever's on our plate, whatever's in in front of us. And, you know, most of the time, if we don't have someone to talk to, like yourself, someone who's experienced, someone who has training, then we're left to deal with that on our own. It's, it's not always successful. You know, right. I, I myself am, am one that likes to talk to other people. It's not that I, not that I let every person, you know, lead 
lead me down the path like they've got the right answer, but I get input from different people to make my own right. decision. But it just allows me to find balance for all my opportunities or all my options. And I guess some people aren't as as open to discussing their business with other folks. So what happens then? Is it more important that they find someone like yourself or that they just talk to their friends? Or what's the best way for people that maybe aren't so open to talking to others? Yeah, I mean, if they're not open to talking to other people, they definitely shouldn't be in real estate. <laughs> just being honest, they yeah. shouldn't be in it. They should find another business. I don't care how, I don't care if they think it's the best deal in town. If they don't want to talk to people, this is a people business. Very much find so. something else. Sorry, I'm not going to try to change anybody, you know, but if they are a people person, but they just have, or they want to help people and they want to be in real estate, then they just have to, and they just feel shy, then that's something different that they need to work through. But if generally they are just introverted people, that's also something to think about. If people that are introverted, there's things that's like introverted, extroverted. So like, that's a little bit different, but if somebody is very introverted and they just want to keep to themselves, they might want to reconsider real estate if they don't like, to consider not to do it, just as a thought. But you know, something happened to me just in the last couple of days. An investor sent me a message. He happens to be in my my community, the sub two community, and sent me a message and just started saying, "I do this and I do that and I do this." And and I, my initial response was, "Well, you, you really have no idea who I am, do you?" You know. And he said, "Well, here's my card. And this is what I do." And I said, "Well, can we talk and get acquainted?" And he says, I'm the number one salesperson in this. And this guy had no desire to get to know me. Uh, oh. You know, the thing I, I encounter quite frequently, and I, I talk to my group all the time, don't chase the deal, chase the relationship. Get to know people, be genuine, which requires opening ourselves up to some extent so that right. others can re relate to us, respond to us, see who resonates with us. We have to do that to see who we might resonate with. But... When it comes to people that are just chasing the deal and they're just concerned about the dollar, and they're just concerned about their business, and they don't take time to really get to know other people, is there a way that, that – what's the best way for them? To, I mean, first, they have to see there's a problem, I guess. Yeah, people like that don't want to change typically. And they're – so I would say that, like, they're stuck in a picture or they're stuck in a way of being. And also – to be really honest, maybe they have um, some social awkwardness or like maybe they have some type of um, they're not able to read certain cues. Who knows? It could be that. But I mean, people like that, I don't know. It's, <laughs> you know, like I don't there's nothing really changing people. It's almost like if they're not wanting to get to know me, then. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. Not, not I'm within the last month. I had somebody else message me. I get friend requests, right? We're talking about Facebook to some extent, and I asked the guy, "Hey, can we exchange numbers and we can get get acquainted?" And I tried to bridge that gap and open that door so we can actually see if we resonate. And the guy basically decided to block me because I asked to exchange numbers and get acquainted. You know, huh. this, this instance that happened yesterday was another version of the same thing. Yeah. You no, know, because I'm always talking about get to know the person, get on the phone, hear their voice, hear their tonality, oh, yeah. hear their delivery. Is this someone you resonate with? Because, you know, my opinion, we don't want to waste time with people we don't resonate with. Exactly. I mean, that's honestly when people are interested to work with me, I say, and anybody here on this call, you know, through my website, you can book a free consultation because, again, like I want to connect with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to see where your intentions are. And I want to see if it's best we work together because majority of the time it's yes. But then I once had this woman that was interested in working with me and I was like, no, you're not meant to work with me. I'm going to send you to my friend. And I gave her her information. She's like, my hairstylist gave me her same information. <laughs> I was like, well, that's double confirmation. So you meant to work with that her. So, yeah, you know, so it's like, that's why I don't work with anybody cold. I would never want anybody to just sign up because. I don't know if they're ready for the work that we're going to do. And it's like, I'm like, okay, ready to like jump in and change your life. And are you 
coachable and are you wanting to receive guidance? Because if you're not, then I don't want to work with you. You are so enlightening for me right now, you know, because, yeah, I get, you know, as all of us that are on Facebook, real estate investors, we get anonymous fund requests. People just send us one and think we're just supposed to accept it because we've received it. You know, and I tell my group all the time, send a message with your friend request you're sending out. Introduce yourself. Let someone know who you are, where you're from, what we have in common. This is why I'm sending you a friend request. Here's my number. Can we talk on the phone? Because it's so important to, to, as you say, bridge that gap. And I find with what I, I bring, I think, to the real estate community, which is, you know, certainly not at your level, but trying to help people learn how to build relationships, learn how to be communicative, learn how to extend themselves. You know, it makes me now revisit, like, you know, I get these friend requests. I'm like, oh, let me reach out to them and see if they see the value of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I I find myself spinning my wheels, wasting my time on people that don't even understand the concept, much less find value in it. And I think sometimes the people that I'm best apt to work with are people that have been referred to me yes. or people have some commonality or someone has made an introduction because if people right. don't see the bit, I mean, I've just purged 250 people off my friend's life. Gone. Nice. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no value. There's no communication. There's no interaction. And I need to fill my space up for a, a Heidi Chesla, for a Vanessa Taylor, for a, a Biz Wallace. I need to leave space right. open for people that I know I am going to resonate with, people that do understand my message. So right. from what you just said, I'm, I'm almost just thinking like, heck, if, if people, one, don't send me a message with the firm request, firm request is deleted. You know, they, they need to come with an introduction because otherwise I find myself taking my time to try and and present a concept to them of the value of which what I'm bringing provides. And most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a wall. Yeah. Well then I think it's also, I mean, can I be really blunt with you? Yeah. <laughs> also something I feel like you, it's, you have to stop spreading yourself thin as in, yeah, like you're saying, trying to convince people, but then also coaching them on how to communicate. It's like, then those people you probably need to send to me <laughs> or energy healing because that's so you're being a teacher, which is great, but that's going to take up so much time. And there's certain qualities and things that, okay, you can give people tips here and there, but I would not be spending a lot of time on certain people that really need coaching. Cause essentially you're just giving free coaching away. And in yeah. turn, it's going to make you exhausted and tired and, that's where you have to learn to cross, like put a boundary up as in like, okay, am I giving too much that, you know, they should be paying for a service for me yeah. or do I need to send them to somebody like Lisa? You know what I mean? Or somebody else. I don't know. Like, you know, there could I'll, be I'll somebody. be sending them to you. Great. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's like, but the thing is you shouldn't be spreading yourself thin as in like you're helping people and being friendly Sometimes there, there's a line to cross when it's like friend and taking advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. No, most definitely. And like taking advantage of your niceness, taking advantage of your coaching. And it's not your job to convince anybody. Yeah. No, you, you are dead right. And and that is part of my mindset. You know, I, I'm not looking to convince anybody. They don't see the value. I'm going to move on. I don't really take a lot of time. I'll take enough time to talk to someone until they understand what who I am, what I'm about. But yeah. like that one guy that, that messaged me and I said, do you know who I am? Do you know what I do? And when he didn't even want to hear it, <laughs> I'm like, I, can, I can see this is going nowhere. Heidi, you had another question for Lisa. I actually put my hand back down because you guys had it right on the nose. Like you just, and from spending a lifetime in healthcare trying to, you know, that's kind of where my journey went. And as far as kind of finding my own space and my own energy is just spending so much time trying to convince someone of the value of something or to do it there, there is a way to teach, but there's also, it's a hard, it was a hard thing for me to learn that I just couldn't, if people weren't ready for it, there wasn't a whole lot I could do, but to hold space for them and say, Hey, I'm here when you are ready. 
and sometimes that happened. So yeah, I loved the perspective from Lisa. That was awesome. Yeah, no, Lisa's yeah. awesome, and the perspective is right, is right on target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Heidi. Mm -hmm. And that kind of goes to back to like an energy healing. Like, just think, for instance, the more we do the energy healing, too, we more we get in tune with ourselves. So, say hypothetically, JJ, you're talking to somebody, and all of a sudden, there's some cringe in your body when you're talking to somebody and then you're like okay either I'm not meant to talk to them or when you are talking to them and you get some cringe or some some feeling it's like your body's telling you hey stop giving them free advice now this is your line don't cross this line and you can say hey you know it's been nice talking to you I think you know we had a good conversation I hope you got some value in what I said today um but I gotta go yeah, you know, cutting it there, but our bodies are always telling us. And, you know, just even for myself, I used to overgive and I used to be a huge people pleaser. And like, the more I'm learning to take care of myself, the more I'm stepping back and kind of pushing away, but in, in a kind way, you know, because I think we all deserve love and respect, regardless of whoever it is, friend, family, client, whatever, you know, and it's okay to say sometimes, Hey, you know, I think what you're doing is great. Or maybe you can say, you know, I don't think we're, we're work compatible or whatever, mm -hmm. but I hope you find what you're looking for, you know, and it's okay, you know, you just to end it there. But if you do know somebody that can help them great, but if you don't, it's okay to say bye. You yeah, know, no, trust you're that. still right on base. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, sometimes it's a phone conversation. Sometimes it's a Facebook message interaction. But I reconnect with people sometimes I haven't talked with for six months or a year. And I say, would you like to come back on and, and join us? And or someone will approach me and say, well, you know, you should, I have investment opportunity or I have someone you might want to talk to or would be a good speaker for the group. And I'm like, well, you know, bring them into some of the group or put your investment opportunity in front of those that might be interested and use the group. But the, I, I sometimes found myself trying to convince someone why they should participate. And in a very short period of time, I see that there's a reluctancy. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, at that point in time, without being rude, I'm just like, you know, I realize I've given all I can give. No offense, no harm, no foul. I think, you know, just, the door's always open if you ever want to come and then kind of just go back. Cause I want to save my energy for those people that do really value what I have. Right. And it's okay for you to say, I don't think it's good. You're in this group. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You don't have to be everybody's friend. Yeah. No. And, and, and I realized, and I think we all know this through the course of life that not everyone's going to resonate with us. Not everyone's going to like right. it. And that's okay. Right. And as our energy changes, and you, you know, as we work on ourselves, all of a sudden, maybe people that we resonated with yesterday, we may not resonate with tomorrow. And going from a spiritual perspective, that kind of goes down to like spiritual contracts and agreements that we have before we come into this life. So we say, okay, you're a part of my soul group and we're going to, I'm going to learn this through you and da, da, da. And when that lesson is learned, then we can part ways. So there's, and when you look at it from a perspective like that, we don't try to make ourselves bad or wrong for not resonating with certain people anymore. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, you, people come and people go, and and, and we will resonate with one person one time and then not again. And I'm realizing as my my contacts in my phone got over nine thousand people, I'm like, do I need to have all these numbers? You know, and, and yeah. as my, my friends list on Facebook topped out at 5,000 or 4,995, do I need to have all these folks on my friends list? And I, I started to evaluate both both lists. If I haven't talked to someone in, in a year or two, um, do I need to be on my friends list anymore? No. You know, I really want to have people there that I know I'm engaging with, we're, we're, we're interacting with one another, and not just film my, you know, because I use Facebook as a business tool. Right. For networking, and I don't want to fill it up with a bunch of people that bring zero engagement because at that point in time, I tell ask, ask everybody what value is your friends list at that point in time, and the mm -hmm. same with my phone. I 
I, I don't need to have numbers in there that I haven't used in, in year to years. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm going through my own purging, cleansing right now of, of seeing who I need to have around me, who I don't need to have around me. And that's allowing me in my own way to find a little bit more balance. Uh, Troy Caudell, you're on with Lisa. What's your question? I just want to bring up that when you were talking about the people getting into the Reiki energy, I actually followed that for a long time. Today, I still follow meditation. Mm -hmm. so I find it very helpful. And I agree with you with that whole energy thing, because I had the privilege or honor to go to the Lakota International Sundance and raise the Tree of Life. Oh, beautiful. And I saw how there were two ladies that just volunteered their time working on the dancers only. And I could see how that affected everybody. And having raised the Tree of Life, I could feel that energy connection when they were dancing i could feel the connection with them even though i wasn't in the vicinity anymore mm -hmm. then i came back to it but i shut myself off from that kind of stuff for years and i've recently brought myself back into it and i'm starting to find that the people that I had connections even locally that were teachers and leaders and friends in that area are starting to come back into my life just by chance. Mm -hmm. I would say it's to me, I think the universe saying you're going back where you need to be. You're getting back on track. And uh, I've been trying to struggle with things that have been happening with my body as to why. Mm -hmm. so I'm still trying to figure that out but I wanted to say yes I fully agree with what you're teaching and trying to get across and help people with because I've been there and understand it but I didn't commit to it didn't stay with it and it had I have personally seen the uh, effects of not doing so I just wanted to appreciate you for this Zoom. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. And thanks for sharing. And remember, every day is a new day. So, you know, just because you haven't kept up with it doesn't mean you can't start again. Well, that's what I said. Every day I'm thankful I get to open my eyes. I was like, I just wanted to come thank you and thank JJ, you know, for having these Zooms. And thank you for coming on as a guest speaker. No, you're welcome. Thanks for sharing. Boy, thank you so much. Good to see you, my friend. Your message is powerful. You know, what you do is powerful. I, I think um, the most powerful thing really is the enlightenment of introducing people to concepts that they're either not aware of or they overlook or they've forgotten, you know, yeah. and, and, and the importance of finding balance, the spirituality. Uh, and you have, I know you we could talk for hours on chakra. We could talk for hours on Reiki, you right. know, and, and I'd love to do both of those things with you, you know, in a coffee house or something. But um, I just really appreciate you being here today. I think you've, you've really opened, opened our, our, our mind to a couple of things. Um, I've got two questions for you. I'm going to wrap up this a little bit, but um, if people want to reach out to you, whether they're on the call right now or, whether they're watching on YouTube weeks and months down the line and they decide they want to, you know, catch up and ask you questions, maybe get some coaching, training, teaching, consultation. Um, what's the best way for folks to reach you? Yeah. So the best way would be to go to my website and I'll put that here in the chat and that's healings by lisam.com. And there you can book a free consultation. And I say that for anybody. So whoever, if I know you, I don't know you, <laughs> go through that way and you can book a consultation and hear more at what I do in depth 
And, you know, you can book a discovery call. You can see right there at the top, or you can, if you scroll to the bottom, you can also book a call there, same place. So, yeah. And then you can see all my testimonials and all the other services I do, because I also do um, space clearings and offices and homes. I even had a client who, she was a big actress, or she is a big actress, and she had a house on Abbott Kenny that didn't sell for two years. And then I did space clearing and I said, did you have fights with ex-boyfriends like in the patio? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, did the space clearing. And then two months later it sold after two years of not selling because energetically that's all connected to something. And then I had a chiropractor's office who I did space clearing for, and she was like, phone's bringing off the hook. This has been good. I'm like, great. So, um, just like people need energy healing, so do spaces sometimes, you know, and it makes me think of like, like even those, you know, commercial real estate locations that keep having new business, like new, they like keep cycling. And it seems like no business can like stay put there. I feel like there's sometimes an energy blockage or something there. So Jerome here, you're on with Lisa. I, I sure, sure. Hello, Lisa. Lisa. Here in the chat. Hi. It was interesting. Your part of your session, I learned a few things about myself, and that was uh, sometimes we sort of tendency to be sort of standoffish, but you don't really realize that possibly you're offending people and not being open. And I thought that sometimes it comes from lack of confidence. Other time you don't want to be overbearing. But I think that I learned a few things about myself and even some of your background and things that's behind the scenes that you don't see or don't remember about some of your upbringing and so forth. Uh, I think that it's getting me some things to focus on. I don't mind talking to people. I, I'm sort of talking around people. I don't have a problem with that. But one thing I don't like the aspect, and I guess it's a generation, the social media aspects of real estate investment sort of bothers me. And it's because I think it's my lack of knowledge, but then it's sort of also not really want to put myself out there that much. But that's really part of the game. I, I really got a lot from what you you had to say there was some nuggets that I can help me improve my communication skills into I don't have a problem talking to people but I just need to communicate more and sometimes you don't know that's the expectation right if you know the expectation I think you'll do a little better when I first met JJ and he came up to me and I just walked in this room and he came up and said hey how you doing he took a picture of me and I'm like wow I thought it was a little take back, but then I noticed he was like that with everybody. And I'm like, well, that's just the way he is. And I, I think it's great network. Though. I mean, he moves around and he work a room. So I'm not at that level yet, but I don't have a problem talking to you. But there's a couple other nuggets that I got out of your talk that I could use going forward to maybe open myself up and open the aperture up a bit. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It. Yes. <laughs> Jerome, thank you so thank much you, for JJ. joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. You know, Lisa, a couple of things I tell folks, and not just, you know, don't chase a deal, chase a relationship, but the importance of, of, of standing forward. And I talk about networking with intention, meaning being visible. You know, that if they're not visible, they're invisible opportunity walks right past them. And I think everything that you talk about and everything that you provide will and can help people with you know resolving maybe some inner conflicts finding balance acquiring confidence and you know i think the important thing is, is that an inner peace that it allows us to stand a little bit stronger a little bit taller and and step out just a little bit more clear um yeah. i think you're fantastic i think your message is fantastic i've met you in person i think you're fantastic i just really really want to thank you for being here um you know, my group's a networking group, and I always talk about the importance of networking, and, you know, there's real estate investors coming into 50, 60, 70, over 100 real estate education platforms around the country. Um, brand new people come in every day that have no experience to a great deal of experience. Most often, they're looking to use social media, Facebook, for the very first time as a business tool. And most often, they're looking to just chase the deal. And are not really looking at how to utilize social media to build relationships because it's a people business. I, I think I kind of know where you might go with 
your answer, but from your standpoint of your expertise and, and your skills and your talents and your training, what is the importance of networking to the success of, of anyone's business? I mean, it's networking is everything. I don't think people realize it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do the things I've done unless I didn't network, you know, but it's also, you have to be, do quality networking, not just talking to people. I think too many people blindly going to networking and they spend a lot of the wrong time with the wrong people. And even for myself personally, I was in the networking marketing company. What this is back in 2014. I was a network marketing company for six years and I, you know, understood the importance of networking, but I think I went into all these networking events and I got so many contacts, but I didn't really take a moment. And this is obviously before I really deeply got into this work to differentiate between what's a good quality contact and what's not. Because sometimes we think, oh, someone's giving us my number and there's a call. All the time we get excited and we think, oh, this is, could be potential. But sometimes we don't take that moment to get in tune with ourselves and that person. Like, is this a waste of time or is this worth my time? And I feel like networking can be great, but it, you can sometimes I think people could blindly go into networking without taking that moment to kind of check in with their own intuition and kind of read other people's energy before just thinking of it as a person, another connection. It's like mm -hmm. more go for quality networking connections than quantity. Andy, you are on with Lisa. What's your question? This has been amazing. Thank you so much. And I want to just build on what you guys were talking about. Time sucks, right? <laughs> kind of. Um, and I, I'm, I'm an investor relations person. I raise capital for big deals, right? So one of the things that, that I deal with all the time is, people who that have this analysis paralysis, right? And and I've tried to look into the ins, really what that's about for them. So I don't know if you've ever dealt with that and about like when you run across that in what we do, I don't know if, you, if you've if you actually ever run across that, but I, I'm, I don't know how to get people to move out of their own way because I see a deal and it's a great deal, but they're like, well, let me get back to you because I've got to, I've got to look at all these different metrics before I can actually commit to anything. <laughs> No. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, but you have to think about it. People are ready when they're ready. And, you know, it's, you can tell them all the right things, but if they're not ready, either you need to send them to me or <laughs> like something. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> there's, it could be that either, like I, I tell people this when it comes to manifesting, even in general, like either it's not the right time it's not the right opportunity or something else better is going to come along. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end of the day, people are going to make their own decisions and you can only tell people so much and you kind of have to learn when to step back and be like, okay, this is a deal. I'm here for, you know, if you want to do this or not and then let them go. But if, if they're questioning it and they're wanting to shift that, then of course you can send them to me. But at the same time, you got to learn to let people go because you're not, that's like getting into another territory that's like not your place to do that. You know what I mean? Like if someone's not ready, they're not ready. You right, know? I get that. I totally agree with that. If they're not ready, they're not ready. I, I think I think for me really is, is like how much information do you need that we haven't already covered 10 times? <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Right, and then yeah. that's also an opportunity for you to kind of reevaluate that and for you to stop giving so much energy to people and explain 10 times because honestly, you should only have to explain once or twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Maybe Follow the it. second time for a follow-up. But after that, say, I don't know if this is best for work together because it doesn't seem what I'm telling you is di you're not digesting it or whatever you want to say or taking it in. So, you know, maybe if you want to work, you know, together, this is it. You got to say yes or no, or keep moving because it's going to waste your energy too. Yeah. I love and that. It's like, and it's like between the 10th and second and the 10th time, it seems like they're still stuck in their own head about things. So it's up for you to protect your energy and not take that on either. Even if, it's like, I even tell like people, like, I don't care if you meet somebody that's a millionaire, billionaire, whoever, if they energetically are, 
you don't feel good around them or you're having to over explain yourself, I'm out, you're out of here. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if they have everything. I, I haven't actually told that to a client of mine recently. I said, I don't care if you have somebody that has, that can pay you cash for a house and they're ready to go, but energetically you feel bad about it. Don't do it. Cause you're gonna have to do a, little, a lot of cleanup on the other side. And the reason you're taking it is because you think this is the only offer. This is the only opportunity, but what happens if you're like, Hey, this is an opportunity. I don't feel good about it. I'm going to trust in God and the universe is going to bring me something else and something better. And it's not, it's not good to keep obsessing and trying to convince somebody. And it's like, it's almost like we have to get more conscious with ourselves and check in and say, is this person taking my energy? And I'm having to explain for the 10th time, like, say you're about to get on the call with this person and you're like, right before you're like, I know where this is going to go. It's going to be the same record playing and I'm over this. It's like, but it's up to you to put a stop to that. Yeah, I agree. You got to stop letting them take the wheel in the sense of like, Oh, but I think they're going to close. If you explain once or twice and they're not getting it, move on. That's great advice. And I will have them call you or go to your website. Yeah, great. You know, and, and yeah. To, to, to wrap, to add to that, uh, you know, frequently in, in the real estate world, and, and, you know, Andy is really a high powered guy with high powered opportunities. Uh, but when, and as he knows, when we're presenting these to people, we're not asking them for anything. We're providing an investment opportunity. Yep. And, and if they don't see it, it gets yeah. back to what I'm talking about. It doesn't make any sense to beat our head against the wall trying to convince them, you know, that the sun's going to, you know, rise in the east and set in the west. Yeah. You yeah. know, they either see it or they or, or they don't. And and um, and I know, Andy, that's the toughest part, because when we have great opportunities, we want people to see this and we want to share it. And um, as I do the same thing with my group, hmm. you know, it's it's we ideally learn by experience and get better and better uh, through trial and error at delivering our message, conveying the value, and most importantly, connecting with people. And we either connect with them or they don't, because what they're, in essence, what they're really buying is, is not my networking information. It's not your deal. What they're buying is me or they're buying you, you know, yeah. and, and that's where the, you know, what I call the chemistry, where the vibe, where the genuine aspect of who we are, you know, resonates or it doesn't. And right. at that point in time, we just keep going if it's not there. No, I totally agree with you, JJ. Yeah. And that's what you're so good at, too. So. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Hey, one Andy- thing I, have, I have one thing to add to that. It's just really simple. And I know this is, I feel like hopefully this helps somebody with a concept. Think of it as like getting back to basics. Like think about it as you're a kid and you have a birthday party that's super fun. And it's like the same idea with this, with real estate, what you're doing. Say you tell a friend about it one or two times and if they can make it great and if they can't, okay, I'm going to go invite some other friends. So it's almost like we have to get to that very simplistic, basic way of, you know, because it's like, just think of when you're a kid, you don't think about it. You say, okay, I'm going to go invite some other friends, (laughs) you know, kind of like. You know, kind of getting to that, be like, oh, they don't want to come to my pizza party. Okay, well, I'll find somebody else that likes pizza. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's like a silly, I sometimes I like to put things in very simplistic um, basis and be like, okay, is this person going to join my pizza party? When you're like thinking to yourself on the phone, be like, they're not getting the pizza party. They're thinking this is, um, you know, macaroni and cheese party. And I'm just, I'm going to go find some pizza party people. <laughs> double pepperoni, double, double pepperoni and onions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that analogy. That's a great analogy. Thank yeah, you. I like to give analogies. That's like a fun thing I like to do. For yeah, so Andy, Andy did, did we cover your question? No, oh, abs- absolutely. For sure. I mean, hey, brother, we th- run into that. That's what we do all the time. So it's a great explanation. So, well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. I'm really glad you're here. I look forward to you and I collaborating on your venture that you've got coming around the corner. Yeah. And looks like we'll very possibly be using some of the tips and tricks that Lisa shared with us today. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks again, Andy. Good to see you. Girl, you're dynamite. You are Thank just, you. You're just dynamite. Um, as they say, how do I do this? <laughs> um, hey, so if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, please like Lisa's video. Please put your comments 
in the comment section your takeaways about what you found valuable, what you found beneficial, uh, you know, the things that you really saw as value to you as someone watching our video today. Um, put comments about how I can improve what I'm doing, how I can bring you better quality product, uh, maybe some speakers you might want to see in the future, but how we can provide better value to you as well. Um, again, if you want to connect with Lisa, her website is Healings by Lisa M, and it's www.healings, plural, by, B-Y, Lisa M.com. If you guys want to connect with me, join my networking group, click the blue QR code here. It takes you to my website. There's a little register now button. Of course, here's my Instagram and my web address up here as well. But I uh, really want to thank you guys for joining us. If you're on the call right now, do not go away. We're going to do some open networking, open forum. And um, again, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you know, look for more videos coming up. We're going to have some phenomenal speakers coming up, coming your way. Maybe not as good as Lisa, but we're going to have some more great speakers coming up on a wide variety of topics. So Lisa, we'll continue in a couple of minutes here, but more importantly, we'll see everybody else out there in, in the world of virtual networking and your website. And um, you guys reach out to her. You're going to love her, support her, get to know her. Great, great value. Lisa, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Hey, everybody out there, thanks for joining us, guys. See you soon. <laughs>